Hello, this is Kevin Wallace again. Welcome back to another C Voice video. We've been talking about voice ports. We discussed analog voice ports, digital voice ports. Now let's see what we're going to do with those voice ports. We can use those voice ports to get us out to the rest of the world, get us off of our voice over IP network, maybe out to an analog phone like we see here, maybe out to the PSTN, and the configuration element that will allow us to point a call out to a voice port or receive a call from a voice port is called a dial peer. And to understand a dial peer, we need to understand the concept of a call leg. A call leg is the perspective that a router has on a particular call. For example, we've got a call going on, let's say, between 1111 and 2222 on screen. From the perspective of router R1, it has an incoming call leg. It sees the call coming in, FXS port 1 slash 1. It sees the call going out over the IP WAN over to router R2. So it has an incoming call leg, call leg 1 from the phone, and call leg 2, which is pointing over to router R2. If we go over to router R2, it has its own perspective. It sees a couple of call legs. It has a call leg coming in from router 1. It has a call leg going out to 2222. We need to have a dial peer to correspond to each of these four call legs. In other words, on router R1, we need to have an incoming dial peer to match the incoming call leg 1. We need to have an outgoing dial peer to point over to router R2. On router R2, it needs to have an incoming dial peer and an outgoing dial peer. We need a grand total of four dial peers. And we have two primary types of dial peers, a POTS dial peer, P-O-T-S, that stands for plain old telephone service, believe it or not, and we have a VoIP, a voice over IP dial peer. A POTS dial peer is going to point to a voice port. That's one of the reasons we've been spending so much time on voice ports. They're critical when it comes to dial peers. A POTS dial peer can point to an analog voice port, a digital voice port, or something we talked about in our analog voice port discussion. It could point to a trunk group, which might be a collection of analog voice ports. A voice over IP dial peer, however, points to a remote IP address. Maybe it's the IP address of another router. Maybe it's the IP address of a Cisco Unified Communications Manager server. Let's walk through this call step by step. We pick up the handset on phone number 1111 and we dial 2222. As the call comes into router R1, router R1 is going to match an incoming dial peer. It's going to see that we have a call coming in on FXS port 1 slash 1, and it's going to see the dialed number 2222. It's going to see that that phone number, according to a voice over IP dial peer, is available by sending a call setup packets over to an IP address of 10.1.1.1. So we send, in this case, H.323 call setup packets over to that IP address, over to router R2. It also has to have an incoming uh, dial peer. In this case, for this call, it's going to be a VoIP dial peer. That's the incoming dial peer. We're coming in over this IP connection. And the destination is 2222. And we have a dial peer, a POTS dial peer on router R2 that says, to get to 2222, go out of FXS port 1 slash 0 slash 0. And similarly, we could pick up the phone 2222 and call 1111. We've got those four dial peers in place. Let's go out to the live gear and configure this. Sitting on router R1, we've got a couple of dial peers to configure. Let's go into global configuration mode and let's say dial hyphen peer voice, and here we can give a locally significant tag. You can come up with your own number. If you're pointing to just one phone number, though, here's what I oftentimes do. I'll use the phone number as that locally significant tag. So if I'm wanting to point to that local phone number of 1111, I might number my dial peer 1111. You don't have to. You could number it 7. It doesn't matter. And I say, what kind of dial peer are we dealing with? Is it a VoIP dial peer or is it a POTS dial peer? Well, on router R1, it's going to be a POTS dial peer. We're going to say that the destination pattern, in other words, the phone number that we're pointing to is phone number 1111. And we can use wildcards, by the way, and we'll talk a bit more about that later. So we don't have to have a destination pattern for every single phone number. We can point to a range of phone numbers with wildcards. But besides just pointing to a destination pattern, we also need to specify how do we get there? Well, this phone is available off of port, FXS port, 1 slash 1 on this router. We've specified what's the phone number and how do we get there. That's the POTS dial peer, but we also need a voice over IP dial peer. 
Let's create another one. Let's say dial hyphen peer voice. And let's just number this one 2222. Again, you can make up your own number. And this is a voice over IP dial peer. We still use the destination pattern command to say that we're going to go to a phone number of 2222. However, instead of saying it's available off of a certain port, we specify the IP address. We're going to say session space, not hyphen, session space target, and then we say IPv4 colon. What we're about to give, we're declaring, is an IP version 4 address. The reason we have to say that is you can point to things other than an IPv4 address. You can point to a DNS name, you can point to a SIP server, you can point to a gatekeeper. There are other things we can point to. But to keep it simple now, we'll say the session target is IPv4 colon, and the IP address of router R2 is 10.1.1. One. We've now configured our two dial peers on router R1. Let's go over to router R2 and do the same thing there. On router R2, let's create a pot style peer. We'll say dial hyphen peer voice. And from the perspective of R2, 2222 is locally attached. It's going to be referenced by a pot style peer. So I'll just say dial peer voice 2222 pots. The destination pattern. In other words, the phone number I'm trying to reach with this dial peer is 2222. And to get there, I'm going to go out of port 1 slash 0 slash 0. We've got one more dial peer to go. It's a voice over IP dial peer. Let's say dial hyphen peer voice. And I'll just number this one 1111. And it's a voice over IP dial peer. The destination pattern is 1111. And to get there, we're going to go to a session target of IPv4 10.1.1.2. We've now configured our four dial peers, two on each router. And right now we don't have a call going on. We can confirm this with a show voice call summary. And we see I have a couple of FXS ports on this router, and they're not currently in use. Let's place a call. Let's go over to 11.11 and let's call 22.22. You can hear that ringing. I'll go off hook. Let's reissue that command, the show voice call summary, and we can now see that we do have a call in progress. We see what codec we're using. We're using the G.729 codec. We see that we're in the connected state, and this is off of FXS port 1 slash 0 slash 0, and it's using loop start as its signaling type. We've now seen the basics, the very basics of setting up a dial peer. But in this video, one or two other things I'd like to point out. For example, we were talking about the need to match an inbound dial peer. Let's say that we had a call coming in from the PSTN, and it's coming into a router. In fact, we've been dealing with analog ports here. Let me go to another router. This router has a PRI circuit based on an E1 coming into this router, and I've got a PSTN simulator. Let's see what happens when I call into this router trying to reach a phone number available off of this router. Let me go off hook, and let's dial the phone number to get us into this phone. Not sure if you can hear that well or not, but what happened was we received a dial tone. We got a dial tone when we called in. What was going on there? Well, our router answered, but it answered with a dial tone. We don't want to answer a call with another dial tone because people might think that the call has been terminated and they hang up and they call again. What I could have done there, I could have dialed the extension and the call would have been forwarded to the internal phone. That's not a good practice, though. We want to eliminate what is called two-stage dialing. Let me show you how we can fix that. Let's take a look at the dial peers I've already got configured on this router. Let's do a show run, and I'll pipe the output to begin with dial hyphen peer. And take a look at dial peer 1. This is actually the dial peer that we were matching as we were coming in. Notice I gave a different command. We haven't talked about this one. Incoming call hyphen number dot. This is only used for an inbound dial peer, by the way, not for an outbound dial peer. In fact, this is the first thing that's checked to see if we have a match for the incoming call hyphen number command. And notice I'm using a wildcard of a dot. A period matches one single digit. However, I had multiple digits coming into the router. How come I'm just matching one digit? Well, the dial peer uses variable length matching. In other words, as long as we had one number that was present in the DNS string, the dial number information service coming in from the PSTN, as long as it had one number, it would be a match. 
The rest don't matter, as long as it has, in this case, just one number. So this is the incoming dollop here that we match. And you can see that we came in on port 0 slash 2 slash 0 colon 15. This is an E1 circuit. And remember that an E1 PRI, instead of saying colon 23 to point to the D channel, we say colon 15. And this port answered. It answered with the dial tone. Let's see how to prevent that from happening.